up. My name's Linda Williams. I'm one of the administrators from the MSA Facebook page here in Australia. And I'm here to ask a few questions to Dr. Finkelstein, Professor Finkelstein, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Professor Finkelstein, David Finkelstein. I'm a, a full-time scientist, um, a PhD, not a clinician. And I am on the board of the local um, pay, uh, carers and patient support group, Fight Parkinson's, in which we look after uh, people with uh, Parkinson's and atypical Parkinson's, which my MSA is one. So um, we can start our talk now. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honour to, to speak to uh, you uh, as, a, as a group. Uh, this is a, a fantastic organisation, the MSA Coalition, and they were actually uh, fundamental in translating basic science into a, a clinical trial. I'm going to take you through a scientific journey, which um, very quickly, and then Linda is going to ask a question to which, uh, which I hope that you will be asking. If you, if you need to ask more questions, I'm very happy for you to contact the MSA Coalition to forward questions to me later on. Okay, so this was all made possible by a small MSA Coalition grant, which paid for a PhD student um, and allowed them to travel to the States for a conference. And it was an amazing opportunity. And it gave us the basic science to then find collaborators like Nadia Stefanova in, in, in Austria, and then to get a drug company in, interested in um, doing the translational work. So, and I just will mention that uh, one of our members of our lab uh, lost a family member to MSA. And so uh, it, I dedicate this talk to them. Now, I don't expect you to read any of this, but this is for your homework if you need to. What we have been doing is looking at the basic biology of MSA. And we've had 18 people working on this problem for 12 years to produce these papers. It's about 200 people years work. And we've taken the basic science in the top panel through to two uh, papers looking at the preclinical, that is how a compound works in a mouse. And not only that, we did it in Australia and on the right hand lower panel, we also did it in Austria independently. So that's really important. Next slide. Now, we have to understand a little bit about the biology and I've got a different take about MSA than a lot of people. I'm hoping, so we know now today that we can detect people with MSA about 10 years before they go to the clinic. And we do that by REM sleep brave disorder. They have a sleep, people with MSA have a sleep disorder. And by looking at other measures, we can actually detect um, people this 10 years before. And this is important because it helps, not only helps diagnosis, but it also enables us to do uh, maybe clinical trials much earlier in the, in the condition. So I'm gonna, this came out two weeks ago, and this is why mate, I'm very excited. There's a PET imaging uh, thing for uh, PET imaging. So we can actually now do an, a brain image in the, in the lab to detect MSA and not Parkinson's. So we can differentiate the two. That's really important. Now, secondly, there's a whole lot of stuff which is coming along in the lab, which is so important. We can actually do an ordinary uh, MRI and we can look for iron and we can detect the difference between MSA and Parkinson's. And um, this, we hope, will alleviate some of the stress in the diagnosis of, um, of MSA. Now, but there's also another other little um, tests which are emerging, um, the PET imaging I mentioned, the serum transferrin, so a blood test along with imaging. And we hope that these will be um, able to diagnose people with MSA earlier. Now, iron. Now iron, as I said, it, it was mentioned that we detect that in the, um, in the uh, if we detect it in the MRI, but 
there's a whole lot of chemistry and it's really important that we have iron. But in MSA and Parkinson's, we accumulate iron in the brain. We don't know why. It's a symptom of the condition. Now, what happens, and this is the, the biology, and this is different to what you'll hear from a lot of other people, that causes the alpha synuclein deposit. Uh, the, the, so that's our belief. And I can't point, but you can see that there's the brain here has got lots of different components. We've got neurons, which are in the orange, and the, the glial cells, uh, the, um, uh, the oligodendrocytes are in green, and that's where the alpha synuclein deposits. And when uh, they disintegrate, they disintegrate and cause neurons to die, and that causes the problems. Now, um, this slide shows that there's, when these type of cells, the oligodendral cells, they're support cells, and this is complicated. So Linda, if you don't understand it, please ask. Uh, the, the oligodendrocytes, when you're a baby, the progenitor cells don't have uh, alpha synuclein, but they have alpha synuclein when uh, in, only in MSA. It's a really strange thing. And as MSA, uh, and, but these cells have a very high iron content and it increases in the disease. So that's what our target for our drugs is. So why do I, why do we go with, um, how do I design a drug? Well, I first know the biology and the biology is there's something strange happening with iron and iron, excess iron is bad and it causes alpha synuclein deposits. Now, last week, literally last week, two drug trials tried using in Parkinson's disease used antibodies to get rid of alpha synuclein. Um, it didn't work. Um, and, and if you take my logic here, the increase in iron causes the alpha synuclein deposition. It's the alpha synuclein is not the problem here necessarily. And it's removing something too late. So we, we, we're trying to go in earlier than uh, removing the alpha synuclein and prevent the alpha synuclein depositing. And not only were these trials uh, a failure, these two independent trials uh, by eminent scientists, but they also showed that the, um, there was a significant uh, mis uh, error. Uh, 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 people became sick. Some people became sick because of the treatment. Okay, so we've, there's lots of drugs, and this is what the MSA funded us to understand, which remove iron from the brain. And just this is the science. Uh, the, uh, this is a mouse and the number of slips, the number of falls. If you, um, the, the number of, the, the red in the middle panel, PSA, is more. And then if you give deferoprone or ceruloplasma another drug, then you have less slips, almost near to normal. So by removing iron, you improve the uh, movement of the animals. Not only do you improve the animals, you uh, remove alpha-synuclein, uh, the deferoprone and the seroplasma, remove our alpha-synuclein or prevent it forming. Um, moving ahead, um, I've been, the compound that I've been working with, Alterity, is 434, and it's now in phase two clinical trial. For those of you who want to know about clinical trials, you sh this should be your number one site, clinicaltrials.gov. It's an American site. You type in 434, and if you go through all the various tabs, it will have your inclusion criteria and, um, and where the trial's being conducted. At the moment, it's two sites in New Zealand and one site in the United Kingdom. But this is a really good site for um, everybody to, to look at. And lots of graphs. All that we're going to say, I'm going to say really, is that after long term treatment, the panels on the right show that, alpha, uh, that the drug 434 in very low doses protects the number of cells and it, and it prevents the bad alpha synuclein from forming. That's what these graphs are. For those of which you are uh, technical, that's what this shows. 
And this is another graph looking at alpha-synuclein in, in the dish, and it shows that 434 of the compound prevents the bad alpha-synuclein from uh, accumulating. So um, we've got a drug that uh, doesn't that tackles the one of the problems in MSA, an increase in iron. It's it's been gone through phase one trial, and it uh, is uh, safe, and it's now in phase two trial. And it was all to the the efforts of the MSA coalition, starting off with that seed funding, and then enabling us to get to a drug company. But we're not the only one. Num point number one is an international collaboration to combat MSA. And you, there's some really clever trials and um, people going uh, doing work now. And the second thing, there are new compounds uh, that are being trialled and being trialled earlier in people, um, as I was trying to show you, um, that's it. And so I'll, I'll leave it to Linda to ask questions um, now. Thank you. Um, David, I was going to ask about the first thing you brought up about this new PET imaging scan that's available now and it's available in Australia. Can no, we just ask our neuros? No, you can't. Um, it's an experimental thing still. Uh, there's one uh, PET ligand, it, it's a PET scan in uh, Japan and the United States. Two independent groups have found this and I used it as an, an example how to, uh, that the, the field is moving along. And so we'll be able to distinguish people with MSA much better and monitor their clinical trials much better than uh, previously. And this is such an exciting um, uh, advance that to be able to, uh, to, to actually see if this, uh, you give a drug and the PET scan is actually um, improving uh, the brain. So that's, so unfortunately it's not available yet, um, but that, these things move pretty quickly now. Okay. And how about with the ATH434? Um, is there any talk about it coming to Australia for um, the people here to trial? So the I'm uh, as a scientist, I hand uh, I hand my research over to the the drug uh, the, the trial people, and I don't I'm not involved in that. I don't I I don't know. Apart from those three sites, they're looking for sixty people. It's a relatively small trial. Um, so I don't know, uh, so as far as I know, it's not in the States yet, um, but that's out of my hands and I, 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 I don't know what their plans are. I'm sorry to, to disappoint okay. people. Yeah, but, but I will yeah. say with trials, um, you, have to, you have to be very careful on which trial to go into. Um, not, um, a trials are designed because we don't know what the outcome is. Just like those antibodies, those two antibodies I showed in Parkinson's, which some of them had a significant um, adverse events. So people became sick because of the, the treatment. So you have to have a good relationship with your clinician. It has to be informed. You have to read up on it. You have to know these things. I understand mm -hmm. the desperation, Linda, um, how people yeah. want to go in. But they will clasp for straws and they just want answers and they're just not getting them, unfortunately. Yeah. So this is where I know in, in Australia, um, we're very lucky with organisations like Fight Parkinson's who are independent um, can, and can give advice. I'm not sure what happens overseas. Uh, I'm sure MSA Coalition will have appropriate referral services too. Mm. So that it's this desperation... Um, we, we still have to be very careful with these trials. Yeah, fully understand that. Um, is there any other way or can you offer anything in regards to how we can work with the medical fraternity when we go into hospital? Um, you know, I'm hearing from people saying they're taking fa um, fact sheets from Fight Parkinson's, from the MSA Coalition, and they don't want to read it. You know, yeah, we um, feel that we're going in as carers, knowing more about the condition than some of the medical staff. So this is, I'm not a clinician and we, and you and I can't offer medical advice, but we, we um, what 
I know this is taking my hat off and putting on my other hat as a board member of Fight Parkinson's. We have a passport which we give as your, uh, to the clinicians. Um, this is a, 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 this co a collaboration between carers and, um, and hospital is very difficult, isn't it? Um, I don't know that answer, but, um, but it is something that has to be made. Well, I suppose if you're aware that it is difficult and you prepare yourself when you need to go to hospital, that would be a useful thing. And having a, like yeah. a passport, that is all the, com the list of your drugs, uh, your contacts for your neurologists and your physios and your um, etc. So yeah. it's it, those type of things. It's, it's just very hard being a rare disease. A lot of people we go um, with a portfolio basically. We, we do have um, all our um, the background that we, where we've been to, who we've seen, um, multidisciplinary teams. We've done a lot, but the minute you go into hospital, it's like you're having to explain it all because they won't listen, they won't read. And that, we are we are very frustrated. Over COVID, it was even it was very difficult as well. Oh, um, you, yeah. uh, care, and I will say, carers need to be cared for as well. Carers yeah. have to look after themselves. Um, and it's a it's a it's an area which we're aware of at fight Parkinson's, um, but it's it's it is difficult. Um, yeah. So the, the and I, I just say uh, I, last week I was at the um, virtually at the movement disorders meeting on, on MSA, and there are new therapies coming along. Um, I found it was very exciting for me. I found that uh, people of Asian uh, descent have a particular type of MSA and they're trialling a new treatment which is specific and tailored uh, for that type of condition. So those type of things are happening now in MSA. Um, I saw also, also saw some really interesting uh, tests. Um, as you know, that uh, swallowing and, and breathing can be a, a bit of a problem and some really interesting tests to, to, to how to quantitate that. And all these are important when you're doing drug trials because you can assess if these compounds are working. Mm. What about, have you got questions about the basic science? I know it's hard. Well, I was then, going to ask about how you determine in your research, how do you determine between, and you were talking about trying to find answers to just, you know, differentiate between Parkinson's and MSA, how do you how do you do that in advance, and can you decipher whether someone's going to end up with MSAP, MSAC? My sister had mm. both. Mm. I went down the symptoms, and she had both at the same time. I just call it MSA. I don't um, highlight the P or the C. So this is okay. So I'm a scientist, and I collaborate with clinicians. I rely on the clinic, clinical diagnosis and, um, and I need the community because one of the valuable things which uh, that the community gives us scientists is they donate brains. And it's, it's a horrible thing to say in, in this, but that has been the basics where I've learned a lot about the condition. Um, these donations have help me understand the biology of MSA, whether it's MSA, P or C. It's really important. So there's this co collaboration. And also, uh, we, we consult with people with MSA and, and their carers to be involved with, clinic, with, with all our research. That's so important. So this combination, this three-way combination between scientists, um, Consumers, I hate using that word, but consumers and clinicians, uh, that is starting to move uh, in, in directions which we hadn't expected. Mm -hmm. So I, as a scientist, took um, and, uh, human tissue and I understood the biology. We then um, uh, collaborated with a drug company. I suppose that's the fourth aspect who designed a compound which was 
designed to be taken by mouth, designed to be safe as possible, and um, that targeted that component of the biology which I found in tissues. And then we then proved it in mice. And now it's up to the clinicians to see if we did a good job. But mm. unfortunately, as you saw, it, that it took how many years? 12 times, 180 years of people years to get to this point. We're not moving quick mm -hmm. enough. And I apologize yeah. to people. And should we be highlighting more about the donation of our brains? I'd sign um, up. It is one of the things which is a very sensitive aspect. Um, people mm. should know that it is one one avenue in which they can contribute to research is by donating brains. And I don't know uh, in different countries what um, how that occurs. I only know locally, but it, that is something which people can do. And of course, mm. spend their time with organisations and also uh, fundraising and all those type of things are yeah. so important. It's very hard and especially somewhere like Australia because we have such a, a wide land and our brain banks are in our capital cities if they've exactly. got them. Um, yeah, and I I'm don't sure it's a... but I, I've donated and I just hope my brain gets there in time. Not that I have MSA, but what keeps me going? What keeps me fighting? I think that's a good it. place to finish, isn't it, Linda? We've, we've yeah. consumed our time. I, I thank everybody and I thank the MSA Coalition for doing such a wonderful job. Um, and let's hope we can get together face to face at, at the next year's conference. It would be great. I'd love to do it. Thank you very thank much you. for your time, Professor Finkelstein. Thank you very much. Thank you.